Hi, we're back. We're on the next to the last step of the 2500 stereo receiver rebuild and today I'm working on the N2510 intercom control unit. This is actually in some respects could be considered the master station of the 2500 system. While the receiver has the amplifiers and the tuner and the other audio related portions, this unit is where all of the wiring from all of the remote speakers run to and are connected up on a terminal board that would be in the wall housing behind it. And what you have here is something that's kind of interesting. You have a total of 12 intercom room control switches and I've already taken the knobs off these. You can see it all put back together when I'm done working on it. Each one of these controls an individual room and here for this unit in this home they're labeled. We have kitchen, great room, living room and so forth and it's pretty standard selection of operation modes for each speaker that you would see on most modern intercom systems that Newtone has made. Uh, you have an off position, you have radio and intercom, standby which later became called intercom only. Standby means that the radio or the music is turned off in that room but the intercom still functions and then monitor. Monitor allows you to listen into the sounds in that room and those sounds would be here th heard throughout the rest of the system for all of the stations that are in the radio intercom position. The other thing that you have on this is there is a speaker built in behind this grill here so this is a mono station since it's only one speaker and no music plays out of this one. This is strictly an intercom speaker. And then we have the four intercom control buttons up here. They're grouped into two separate groups. You have door speakers which have talk and listen. And when you speak to the front door, uh, it comes out through the exterior door mounted speakers and throughout the inside of the house. And then you have inside speakers, which would also include any patio stations. And you have talk and listen here. When you use inside speaker talk and listen, it excludes the door speaker from the conversation. That way the neighbors don't hear what you're saying throughout your house. And this system would be one of the early models that has what Newtone calls hands-free reply, which means you can push talk to call to someone and then push listen to hear the response. The person that's responding doesn't have to go right to the station. There's a rotary volume control here, which controls the, inter the volume out, out of this individual station, not for the whole system, just this station. And then the other unique feature on a 2500 system, when it has the 2510, is it has a version of remote music control. And what that allows you to do is on this station, you have two control push buttons. It allows you to switch between AM and FM radio. And once you switch to FM, there are actually several preset stations that you can, uh, that you can pre select. And this is done in kind of an old school way. There's no microcontroller, there's no memory, there's no digital tuner uh, for certain. It's strictly a mechanical system and it's done with a big cable full of wires. And I'm going to turn this around and show you. But anyway, from this station and from the remote stations also, because this feature is available on the remote stations throughout the house, you can switch between AM and FM and then you can scroll through your preset or predetermined FM radio stations. And when you do that, through this little window right here, there is a mechanical dial that turns every time you push the button and it shows you which preset station you're on. So let's go ahead and turn this around and see what's on the back. So now we're looking at the back side of the 2510 and you can see there's a ton of wires. There's all of these really large multi-pin, uh, I think they're Molex style connectors. These are the ones that plug into the terminal board, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, lots and lots of wires on this. Fortunately, there isn't a lot that really goes wrong with this unit. It's mostly cleaning switches and those sort of things. So what you're looking at here is, here's the back of the speaker cone. And above that, these are the four intercom talk and listen switches. They're soldered onto their own individual boards. These are fairly typical style plunger switches that Newton used a lot in the 70s. So nothing really fancy there. You've got a volume control pot. This is your big latching relay assembly. 
and it's the one that drives the dial with the numbers on it that you see through the window on the front of the unit and this is what is responsible for allowing you to scroll through your preset radio stations and then here you have what's referred to as the intercom relay board and this is actually the board that controls the intercom functions for the entire system what you have here is a talk and listen relay a standby relay and a door relay here and while the 2500 receiver contains the intercom preamp board this is the board that controls the um, functions of the actual communication of the 2500 system there isn't really a lot that goes wrong on this so it'll just be a few quick checks and a few components to replace just because of age and then buried back down inside the this board and this board here are the board that all of the switches for the room control switches are soldered onto and those are pretty standard rotary switches they're not particularly sealed, but the way this unit is constructed, they're not too much exposed to dirt that filters down through the wall cavity, so they just need to be cleaned. Sometimes they become very stiff or almost frozen, and some careful cleaning can bring them back. On this unit, they're in pretty good shape because I think this system gets used quite a bit, so as long as you keep moving them, they seem to work okay. So not too much to do on this one. Uh, let me pull a terminal board out for this and show you what's involved with that. This is the terminal board that goes behind the 2510. So this is an N2510A unit, and the front panel you just saw is the 2510B unit. That's the way they labeled it in those days. And what you have here are rows and rows and rows on the terminal board this is where the wiring for the remote speakers are connected that's all in this area a 2500 system is an eight wire system so you have many 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 screws for all of the eight conductor cables and then this group of screws here these are the interconnect wires that connect this unit to the 2500 receiver which is usually located in another room the way these systems were typically be installed is the 2510 control unit isn't usually mounted where the receiver is. The receiver is usually part of a larger overall wall display which can include some three-way wall mounted speakers and then a cabinet that includes the turntable and perhaps a cassette player and some record storage and then you have the 2500 receiver and then another three-way speaker so you end up with sometimes as much as six feet of new tone mounted on the, your living room wall and you certainly wouldn't want this sort of utility piece mounted there and spoil the look so oftentimes these are installed maybe in the kitchen pantry or some other out of the way location where it's convenient to use but it's not the most important thing to be able to use every day because you really don't these are the sockets where all of the multi-pin connectors plug in that tie the, the 2510B into the terminal board and these are interesting. These are little sliding pots. There are six of them. And these are what are used to pre-select your AM and FM radio stations. And the way this is designed, one of these, and I think it's number six, but I'm not positive. It could be number one. I have to go back and look. Um, one of these you slide to pre-select a single AM radio station. And then each of the other five you slide to pre-select an FM station. So it's done mechanically through a very clever uh, design that Newtone came up with. And for instance, if you were setting your first FM station and you have the FM radio turned on, as you slide this control, it's the same as turning the knob on the front of the receiver. You would, you would scroll or move through all of the stations that you can receive, and wherever you leave this set, if you want to leave it preset to 104.5, you carefully slide it into position so you get the best reception you can on 104.5 and that's where you leave it and this will always be 104.5 unless you move it again so it's kind of a clever design that's why on the front panel the speaker grill flips open and it gives you access to these so you can change your stations whenever you want to so that's all there is for this part next shot will be the completed 2510 and then on to final testing see you soon